Germany uses SpaceX Starlink for tracking. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, guys, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna geek out today. If you don't wanna bring out your inner geek, this is definitely not the video for you. I'm gonna get a little bit geeky because I think it's fun. And I was reading an article about Germany using SpaceX Starlink to be able to track things, items, aircraft, missiles, <laughs> just track in general. And they were doing it in a passive manner. I thought this was very fascinating. A secondary use case of SpaceX Starlink that is not authorized by Elon Musk. Very interesting. So I wanna read this article to you and then give you my commentary on it. And once again, just geek out a little bit. Over the last few live events, you guys have asked me to kind of geek out on stuff. So yesterday was a little bit geeky. Today's gonna to be a little bit geeky also. If you guys don't like it, let me know and I won't do it. But um, I just love this kind of stuff. So hopefully you do too. Before I get into it, I just wanna say, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, consider doing so. Check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. They're 100% free. Also, if you get anything out of this content, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are, thank you very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So let's jump into this article. And once again, I'll give you my commentary. We'll geek out a whole bunch here. And then most importantly, I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about all of this? If you have any additional information, share it down below. This is all about community and not about me, just some talking head geeking out here on stuff. So anyways, the article starts out by saying, Germany has been investigating a new passive radar system for target detection and imaging using the signal from SpaceX Starlink satellite network. Details of a functioning demonstrator appear in the latest annual report from Germany's Minister of Defense and Defense Technology. Even by modern standards, Starlink is a massive constellation consisting of more than 5,000 satellites. From an altitude of 550 kilometers, the low Earth orbit satellites provide global all-weather coverage with a strong bandwidth signal to Starlink customers. For Fraunhofer Institute of High Frequency Physics, Physics and Radar Techniques, or FHR, designers of this Sabia 2.0 Passive Radar System Demonstrator, this is an ideal set of circumstances. The large number of Starlink satellites means that objects can be illuminated from multiple directions, bringing to sight objects that might be obscured in particular situations where there is only one transmitter. The system uses one high-gain reference antenna to track a selected Starlink satellite and copy its signal, and a secondary surveillance antenna pointed towards an observation area to receive echoes from its target. By observing the behavior of the Starlink satellite, the Sabia 2.0 passive radar system detects targets without emitting radar signal. It can also operate from a moving platform, such as a ship, as it does not emit signal from its location and its movement can be compensated. I'll get into that in just a second. As well, the energy saving benefits that come from opportunistically using Starlink radiation to run a passive radar system. The system is difficult to detect by adversaries and therefore cannot be easily disturbed by interference radar like jammers. A new prototype from FHR has begun combining the Starlink signal and radiation from geostationary television satellites to generate continuous radar imaging, allowing radar images that can be recorded for remote sensing. So this is really interesting. I love the idea of taking a product or taking a service or taking anything and then using it for something that it was not originally intended for. 
they're doing just that. But they're doing it without the, let's say, help of SpaceX Starlink. And the reason being is they are just simply listening to or listening for the RF or the radio frequency emitted from the Starlink satellites. So as long as the satellites are actually emitting any type of RF, they're going to be able to use it for triangulation. Now, geeking out a little bit about this, I just wanna show you how this works. Right. Let me bring up a image. Now, this isn't exactly how it works because this is based on a single satellite. We're talking about 5,500 satellites, but just use this as an example. So as we can see here, you have a satellite, a single satellite, and it's moving. You have P0, P1, and P2. That is the position at any given time. Now, we also have an equation here which shows as delta x, y, and z. You have delta x, y, z, one, and you have delta x, y, z, two. Now, if you don't know, delta in calculus is basically used for measuring a variation of variables, let's say. So let's say your x started at 100, and now over time it has turned into 110. Your delta would be 10, right? Which is that variation of the two variables, the variable x here and the variable x there, your variable x in time. Once again, your delta would be 10. That would be the variation or the movement. So using this, obviously you're using your delta x, y, and z in position one to your delta x, y, z in position two to do that variation between the two to now calculate the movement of what they're calculating, which is a plane moving. Now, once again, bear in mind, this is for one satellite. Now, where it gets really interesting is when you start using multiple satellites is what the Germans are doing here. And they're using the multiple satellites for doing this triangulation, something similar to what this is. Now, when you're using a geostationary satellite, you have a satellite that is producing a control, right? Something that is steadfast a control, just like if you were doing some type of experiment in science, right? You have a control because if not, you don't know how the variations are in your variables, right? You need a control. Same thing if you're doing, let's say you're testing sugar. Well, your sugar testing device for diabetes is going to be now set using a target or a control. Then it uses that control to analyze the difference between it and the delta, which would be the difference between the blood that you introduce into the machine, right? And then it'll come back to you with what your glucose level is at. And that's kind of what's going on here. But like I said, remember, you're triangulating based on multiple satellites. Now where things get really interesting here is the geostationary satellites over America and the US are 31 in count. And they're sitting at about 20,000 kilometers off the planet. Now, there's 5,500 satellites, not 31, there's 5,500 satellites in the Starlink collection in their constellation, right? So there's a lot more. Now, obviously there's not going to be 5,500 satellites above the U.S. at any given time, but the U.S. takes up about 7% of the land mass on the planet. Let's add in Canada and South America, let's call it 10%, so the numbers are nice and even. So 10% of the 5,500 be 550 satellites above the U.S. at any given time. 550, not 31. Now, bear in mind, of course, these 550 satellites are moving at 17,000 miles per hour. So that has to be taken into consideration because they are not stationary like those 31. But that's not really a problem because these satellites are moving at a set rate. So you would obviously just have to enter that into the algorithmic equation to get a control based on each one of those satellites based on its speed and its speed and location at any given time. So that's not really that big of a deal to do. But think about the power of that though. Think about the power of 550 satellites. That is a lot. So if we could triangulate things as of right now based on the geostationary satellites, right, that down to about a meter, it would not be any problem, right, to be able to now also do the same with 500 satellites, probably to even a smaller fraction, maybe to a square foot, or maybe even less at that point. Remember, this is kind of similar how the law hunts you down if you use your cell phone. Now, if you were using your cell phone and there was only one tower, it's very hard to hunt you down, right? Because there's no triangulation. 
But as soon as your phone connects with multiple towers, triangulation is very easy to happen and you can triangulate a phone right down to about three feet, <laughs> about a yard. So it is very, very efficient. And the same thing holds true with using these satellites. Now, there's another thing. Obviously, I love the idea of using, once again, Starlink, but for an alternative means. Now, this is not authorized by SpaceX or by Elon Musk, but it doesn't really need to be. Because once again, this is passive. Passive meaning it is just receiving signal. It's not sending any signal back. It's just receiving the signal that it is getting. That is it, passively. And once again, that is awesome to remain stealth because now you're not going to get that jammed because people know where you are located because you're not emitting any RF for them to triangulate you. You are just receiving right? And it doesn't take a lot of power to receive. So if we take a look at this picture that they provide, you can see that we have a generator of some kind that provides power. Then you have the receiver, the antenna. And then finally, you have this parabolic type of antenna that's probably sending and receiving its information to another location. And it's all sitting on this pad, which by the looks of it, rotates 360 degrees. I don't know what that's all about, but that's pretty damn cool. Now, like I was saying, I love that they're using this constellation for something that it was originally not intended for. I just love that. There should be multiple uses for everything. Now, the problem is, is you get uses that are nefarious sometimes. And those are the ones that we don't like to see, right? It's just like a gun, right? A gun doesn't go and kill someone, but a person kills another person, maybe using a gun. So the gun doesn't do it but it's using the technology for either good or evil, just like anything else. The same thing with chemistry, the same thing when it comes to any type of medical field. You can heal people, but you just also kill people. We don't wanna get into all that. Anyways, what I do find fascinating here is that MIT was working on something very similar, and this was in 2021, and I reported on this back then. Now, it wasn't for tracking objects like missiles or planes, like what the Germans are doing. What it was for is using SpaceX Starlink as a secondary or an alternative means of navigation, of GPS. Now, why is that? Well, if you think about it, if an adversary can block or jam our 31 satellites, well, we're pretty much screwed. You would have no GPS on Earth. You would have no GPS in the air. All of our planes would be blinded, basically. Any missile that was actually traveling using GPS would have to be self-destructed because it no longer knows where the hell it's going. So there's a lot involved with GPS. And having a means of having an alternative version of GPS that cannot be or would be next to impossible to compromise, like SpaceX Starlink with 5,500 satellites, eventually there'll be 43,000 satellites. You will never be able to compromise that system, that constellation at that point. Using Starlink as an alternative GPS system I think is a smart thing to do. Now, the folks over there at MIT did reach out to Elon Musk and said, listen, can we get more information, more data so that we can be even more accurate and all this? He basically said, you know what? We're not gonna do this right now, all right? I have bigger fish to fry. It's a good idea, right? And it will work. And matter of fact, he said not only would it work, it would work 10, 15 times better. And if we use my calculations I just gave you with 5,500 satellites and the land mass being about 10% of that, 550 would be the satellites overhead. So if they only have 31 currently, let's call it 30, and now we would have 550 overhead, you can see the massive disparity between the two. It would definitely be 15X better, let's call it. And that's if every one of those 550 were activated or actually emitting RF. Some of them might not be. But either which way, you'll have a ton more information. Once again, they are not stationary. They are moving. That means that you do need to have some algorithmic equations going on to equate that movement based on speed and time. But that's not really that hard to do. 
even for MIT and without the data from SpaceX, they obviously can still do it. So at any rate, I just think that this stuff is fascinating. I hope you do too. If you have any additional information or that we can discuss down below, let's have the discussion. Let's talk about this geeky stuff. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, once again, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Also, if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is J Christina. You can use that promo code to get an additional 15% off at checkout, or you can use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Also, if you want more Starlink content, click this little button over here. I put together a playlist, a Starlink playlist with over 230 Starlink videos. That's over the course of the last 27 months. Go check it out. There's a lot of helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, the why behind all of it. The why is most important. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. Hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Also check out my teas as well as my merch. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you in a vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.